Wow. Greetings, my LCS family, Lynchburg community. I'm Crystal Edwards, superintendent of Lynchburg City Schools. I am at one of our four command centers here at EC Glass. Just to give the community an update on what Lynchburg City Schools has done during the past week to make sure that our students have been fed, and not just our students. It's really important that you understand that we're feeding all the children in Lynchburg City Schools. We have prepared enrichment materials for them. Um, I have a couple folks here who are going to tell you what we've done um, this past week and what we're ready to do today. We are living day by day with this thing every day and we look forward to this afternoon when the governor gives his address at 2 p.m. to give us more information. But before I turn it over to my people, let me just say I have never been more proud to be superintendent than I am right now here at Lynchburg City Schools. Um, you have no idea the tireless efforts that my staff has done and put together. They all need to be commended for their heroic efforts during this past week, really coming together to make things happen in this community. So I applaud all of my transportation department, nutrition department, administrators, teacher volunteers, custodians. My entire staff is really here holding it down for the community. So what we'd like to do is give you a little update from each department and then I will come back and close this out. So I'm gonna start with Ms. Beth Morris from Nutrition. Good morning, I am Beth Morris. I'm the Director of School Nutrition for Lynchburg City Schools and I have a prepared statement so I hope you will bear with me as I, um, as I recap uh, this past week. At approximately 1 p.m. on Friday, March 13th, the Lynchburg City Schools Department of School Nutrition was notified that Governor Ralph Northam had ordered the two-week closure of all Virginia public schools starting Monday, March 16th. Over the next 70 hours, School Nutrition, working in tandem with the LCS <coughs> Transportation Department, developed and executed a strategy to continue meal service to the students in the response to the governor's directive. We immediately identified four schools to serve as production and distribution sites based on their kitchen facilities and locations. Dunbar Middle School, Linkhorn Middle School, Heritage High School, and EC Glass High School. School Nutrition is operating the USDA Summer Food Service Program to provide both breakfast and lunch to all Lynchburg area children ages 18 and younger during the school closures. On March 13th, I submitted the required SFSP application and waiver request for non-congregate feeding to the Virginia Department of Education. We received approval from VDOE the following day to operate the Summer Food Service Program, waiving the USDA congregate feeding requirement. On Saturday, March 14th, I assigned the 101 school nutrition professionals to the four centralized locations and communicated the feeding strategy to all cafeteria managers to share with their teams. We honed a meal distribution plan to utilize school buses to canvas the city on all elementary school bus routes. We also planned for meal pickup at each of the four school sites from designated outdoor locations. At 8 a.m. on Sunday, March 15th, school nutrition staff mobilized to move food and supplies, set up production sites, and to prepare meals for the following day. By Sunday evening, 5,000 bagged lunches and 5,000 bagged breakfasts were ready for delivery across the city. On Monday, March 16th, meals were loaded on 65 buses and LCS bus drivers carried school nutrition workers from bus stop to bus stop to hand out meals to children. Our dis we distributed over 1,000 breakfasts and lunches that first day. On Tuesday, LCS staff volunteers joined the meal delivery effort and we handed out over 1,500 meal bags. Wednesday, our meal distribution counts rose to more than 2,000. Thursday, in concert with enrichment packet disbursement, 3,265 Lynchburg area children received breakfast and lunch. Last Friday, nearly 3,200 meal bags were distributed. In our first week of school closures, LCS School Nutrition prepared and served over 11,000 breakfasts, 
and 11,000 lunches to children throughout the city. This extraordinary effort has been a Lynchburg City Schools effort. Our maintenance department has transported food and supplies among school sites. Teachers, aides, support staff, and school board members have assisted in bagging and distributing the meals. And our transportation department has provided the means to get the meals in the hands of the children. The meals we are providing through the Summer Food Service Program are free and available for all children ages 18 and younger. USDA does require that the children be present to receive the meals. More information about the USDA Summer Food Service Program during the COVID-19 school closures is available at www.fns.usda.gov. Excuse me. I want to thank Park. Uh, excuse me. I want to thank Parkview Community Mission for supplying us with grocery bags and donating 88,000 cartons of shelf-stable milk to this effort. Other area businesses have donated bags throughout the week, and we greatly appreciate the community's support. At 11 o'clock today, school nutrition, transportation, and the Lynchburg City Schools community will begin meal distribution to our children for a second week. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ben Copeland, Deputy Superintendent. I'm going to talk a little bit about transportation and give Kim Parker, one of our driver leaders, a chance to, uh, to tell you a little bit about how she's been involved in this. So Ms. Morris just told you about how the rapid planning process began for this really on Sunday morning. On Sunday morning, the Transportation Department also met uh, at 9 a.m. and they started developing what the route structure would be so that we could deliver meals uh, at uh, Monday morning at 11. That route structure was really based off of, of building from the elementary routes that we run twice a day, once in the morning, once in the evening, uh, because that canvassed the entire city. Uh, so uh, I'm gonna give Kim an opportunity to talk about her involvement with this because it's been the key piece of putting this together because it's really our drivers that are the experts about moving around the city and their knowledge of that helped us get this to execution for Monday. Kim? Good morning, everyone. I am Kim Parker. Um, I'm a driver for Lynchburg City Schools. I've been driving for 16 years. So on Sunday, March the 15th at 9 a.m., a core group of leaders came together based upon our elementary routes to put together so that we can go deliver meals out to our students. Um, and according to all the drivers that come to me with the feedback, it is so excellent to be able to go do what we do. The parents are so excited when we roll up on the buses, just you know, thanking each of us for um, doing what we're doing, saying God bless you, thank you. Um, also to the LCS staff, because this is truly something that's happening the first time for everyone. Um, so again, we are here to go through this week. We had an excellent time going through it last week, um, handing out meals, and we will continue to be here for our community to hand out meals to the LCS students um, with our bright smiling faces as we do every day as if it was school. Um, thank you again. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ethel Reeves. I serve as the Director of Engagement, Equity, and Opportunity. My role during this pandemic has been to continue to work with our community partners, our businesses, uh, really to help them uh, help us. Um, we have had, as Dr. Edwards said, a great outpouring of support during this time. Um, we have to continue to send the message regarding social distancing. So to our community members who have heard me say, not at this time or not yet, I hope that you will continue to respect that. We do have, as my colleagues have stated, we have workers coming in and we wanna make sure that um, as people are volunteering and wanting to uh, really help us during this time that we are keeping our employees safe. Uh, if there are businesses and organizations who want to provide donations, we ask that you would call the command centers or if you would like to call my number 434-401-6902. 434-401-6902, then we can help coordinate those efforts. Our, our mission has really been to keep um, everyone safe and to really um, thank our community at the same time for all that they do to help us during this time. Thank you. Good morning. 
I'm Tommy Coleman, Director of Curriculum Instruction here for Lynchburg City Schools. Just wanted to share a quick update with you all. Um, when we heard that um, we may need to pro provide some meaningful activities for kids while they were at home, we really started uh, pulling resources. I kind of enlisted the help of my, my staff and, and all the teachers in the division to uh, begin looking at the things that they could pull together for us, uh, developing a plan for doing that, and then um, developing packets that could go home for kids to have uh, things with their parents that they could work on that were really designed to be enrichment and, and maybe uh, a little bit of review. So uh, and after doing that, we were able to, to produce those on, um, during this week on Monday and then moving forward, um, which kind of culminated with us um, sending them out on buses on one, um, Thursday and Friday, and, and we're even continuing to do that today. Um, we're also developing uh, everything that we can as far as online resources are concerned to be able to, uh, to offer more options. So um, it's just our hope that we have some, some meaningful activities to um, help kids stay active and, and help our parents uh, while they have the children there at home. So um, that's where we are at this point. Thank you. So again, I'd like to commend all of our leaders, and as you, as you see, we have many leaders from our bus drivers to our administrative staff, to our volunteers, to our assistants, teachers who have come in, people who are photocopying packets. There's just a wealth of folks here who are helping out during this time. Um, more important, I'd like to thank my team for practicing good social distancing and being safe. And as Ms. Reeves said, there were a lot of community members who wanted to come into the schools and help, help, help. And we didn't want to tell you no, but this virus is serious um, and we want to protect you. We want to protect our families. We want to protect our kids. So we, we're running what I call a skeleton crew here um, at the four command centers just to keep everybody safe. Um, a message to everybody who's out there in healthcare, we applaud you. We know your job is difficult too. Um, and you know anything that we can do to assist you, we, we're here to help with that. And at this point, I will take any questions that I may be able to answer as to the things that we have done, um, recognizing that this thing changes hour by hour, so I may not be able to answer things about the future. Uh, mayors and governors in the states have issued varying degrees, uh, stay at home orders in their community. So if something like that would be issued here in Virginia or um, perhaps just in Lynchburg, um, have you guys thought about how you would potentially work around that to still get the meals to the kids even though the governor or the mayor is ordering people to stay home? Yeah, that is something that we're waiting for the guidance from the governor to let us know um, what our obligation would be and, and what that really entails um, for that. So I don't have a direct answer for that yet. Uh, Short-term situations like schools closing can have long-term impacts on students who are supposed to take SATs, AP exams, do you have any information on if and when these might be rescheduled or what the workaround is for these tests? Um, I don't have exact information on that. I know that the AP exams, there's some things going out right now from the College Board. I would suggest that you check their site for factual information. Uh, right now we've been providing enrichment so that kids have activities and things to keep little minds stimulated during this time, but I don't have any answers as to when those things may be rescheduled or if they may be rescheduled. Dr. Evans, some folks are asking should they be prepared uh, for the school year to end? How could they be prepared for such a thing? And again, I don't know the what the future holds. We are still under this two-week closure at this point. Um, and I suspect that the governor today will give us more guidance as to what the future of schools will be. I will say to all my students who are out there listening, um, as much as possible, continue to use the resources that we've provided, continue to go online and look at some of the electronic resources. There are a lot of things that you could do at home to continue your learning at home during this time of unknown. Are there efforts being made as far as continuing instruction Right now, we're focusing on enrichment until we get guidance from the governor and from the state superintendent as to what the next steps are for Virginia schools. How is the Mitchburg City School staff handling this situation at headquarters? Are you working on it? I think you 
said you want a skeleton. Yes, yes. We are rotating as many staff as possible to cover the four command centers. I would say the, the crew that is here the most often and almost every day are your bus drivers and your nutrition workers and some of your volunteers and your custodians because we need all of those folks um, here every single day. So they are really doing a wonderful job. It's very difficult to rotate many of them because we need all of them. As Ms. Morris said, we prepared over 11,000 breakfasts and over 11,000 lunches um, just last week alone. So you can imagine it's all hands on deck. And as Ms. Parker said, our transportation department, they're showing up, they're here. We have driven to every neighborhood in the city to drop off meals so that we can get the food to kids. That takes a lot of people. And let's be clear that these are not our highest paid employees who are here doing these jobs and that needs to be recognized and they need to be applauded for their efforts. Dr. Harris, would you like to address what happens with leftover food questions in the community about that? Sure, there were questions about whether or not we throw away leftover food. And Ms. Morris was up here to tell you that our food is shelf stable. We have not thrown away leftover food. And I commend them on Sunday when they came in to prepare 5,000 meals because we did not have any idea how many children we would feed. We know how many children attend Lynchburg City Schools, but let's face it, private school children are home with their parents. We have uh, families who are watching other people's children who are here, they may be from Amherst or Bedford. So our mission was to feed every child, as she, as she said, under the age of 18 in Lynchburg City School. So none of our food was thrown away, and not that we'll let you back in, in the nutrition prep areas, but you would see that every single day those, those nutrition workers were here, eight o'clock in the morning, preparing more meals. So we are not throwing food away. We are, we are using everything. As a matter of fact, we got community donations for the milk, which we are very thankful for. Dr. Edwards, how are the uh, students and the parents and the community receiving this incredible help that you guys are offering? Are you getting feedback? Yes, they have been wonderful. There are signs posted. They make cards. Um, just their smiles when the buses pull up has, has been great. I've been trying to share some positive stories with my staff um, as not all of them are out there on the front line. Some of them are behind the scenes. But thank you to the community. They have sent us a tremendous amount of love and just thanks. There's a sense of gratefulness um, in this community that we have our, our team out there helping. So. How are you doing out there? I'm doing well. <laughs> Taking it hour by hour, um, you know, in here with the team and everything. And I would say I don't think I'd rather be in any other school division than Lynchburg City right now because when we met on Friday, we had plans on Friday that changed rather quickly when the governor closed school for two weeks. And my staff was here Saturday, Sunday, holding it down and doing what they need to do. So I'm very proud to work with these folks. After the governor makes whatever announcement he may make later today, what are the next steps for leadership here at Lynchburg City Schools and disseminating information to families? Where can they look for that stuff? Like Absolutely. Each day we have a Zoom meeting for all, about what, 68 of us administrators. Every single day we've been communicating by Zoom, giving an update. And then at the end of the meeting, um, Ms. Babb, who is our communications um, coordinator, sends information out to the staff so that they know what to expect. She sends information out to the community. So today, um, the governor is going to address the, the uh, Commonwealth at 2. Our meeting is scheduled for 315. The community can expect some communication. I believe you've been sending it out somewhere between 5 and 6 o'clock each night just to keep the community updated on what the next steps are. Is it too, I'm just giving you a question from our viewers. Is it too early to talk about uh, what, you, what you may be prepared to do for seniors and this year's graduation? At this point, I have to wait, await guidance to see you know, what that's gonna be. But when we have information, we'll share it. Okay. If no more questions, then thank you. Thank you.